You got the holes? We got one. How close would the other one be to it? It's not critical. You can go, you know, just give yourself enough so that you've got some, uh, you know, at least an inch between them probably for stability. It's a good idea before running them to just put a cap in the end just to keep sawdust from collecting as you're pushing it through the holes you just drilled. Mm -hmm. Okay, hold there. Okay. Now, very important at this point to remove the cap. And then what I have here is a bottle of soft soap and a package of O-ring. The last full ring here, insert that in that groove. And make sure that's seated. Then you take a little bit of this soft soap, lubricate it up, pull my clip. Let's take a little bit of this soft soap and run it on the inside of this receptacle so that everything's nice and smooth. Slides right into place, and we clip it in place. The O-ring is on the inside of that clip, correct? That's, that's important. It's now held right inside there, and that seal is complete. There's no leakage on that duct at all. Well, usually I've been writing uh, where it's going at the end, like this one right on the end of the unit there, right as I cut it off. You ready? Let's go. That's good. That's it. Remove the plug. It's a really good idea to remove the plug. <laughs> We've had it happen where the dip plug didn't get removed. Somebody put it in and couldn't figure out why they didn't have any air. <laughs> it kind of impedes it a little bit. <laughs> so that's something to be careful of. Lubrication. Search in. Lock, rock that a little bit, and it clips in. And that's it. fit in there very tight. I really do. I'll just pop this off, put those clips in, and then we can pop it back on. There we go. Okay, we Slide these clips on to hold them in place. You feel it uh, sort of snap into its yeah, stop position? Yeah, it goes right to there's a stop yeah. point, yeah. It snaps right in. There it is. The O-ring is on the inside of the clip, so uh -huh. it's set back in, and the clip is on the next ring outside of it. This is a register box. It's a single supply or return. Works the same way with a clip clip system. It's got a cover on here, which during construction just goes in place. 
when you get done, you, after you've installed this, then you can put, we have a cover, a decorative designer grill cover that goes over that and goes in place with the same pin system. During construction, you leave this cover on and you have the sheet rockers, sheet rock right to it. So this is gonna be positioned on the wall, in the ceiling, or in the floor. Where I would have my ducting coming from the ceiling through this sill plate, down into the register. It's as simple as putting it in place. Nailing or screwing it with the nail flange to the wall and then putting your duct into it. So what we've done here is come from our mechanical room over and now we're coming down inside this wall cavity. That's the advantage of having this three inch outside diameter on this duct. We can go even inside a standard two by four stud wall. This fits inside it. And so what we've done is we just drilled the sill plate top and bottom. So you saw it up above where we came down through the sill plate in that stud wall and we snapped a chalk line and then came right across there, right through. And you can see where the chalk line was snapped so that we had that very straight line through those joists, which is very, very important for when you go to pull the ducting. Well, just showing this, one of the important pieces of equipment on the job when we're pulling out our duct, and this is one of the things that people have uh, mentioned a few times with installations, is having a good three inch hole saw. And uh, this is a uh, fairly high performance hole saw when we were pulling, going through joist bays, going through uh, sill plates and so forth, having a good hole saw on the site is very important. And this is actually something we're going to be offering to sell as uh, part of uh, buying systems right through Zender. One of the last things you do when you finish putting all of your ducting up, you've got to have these long runs up in the uh, rafters. You're going to have them in some of the stud walls. And all I'm doing is taking some strapping and simple plastic strapping is all you really need. And I'm just going to strap this down. It points along this ducting to hold it in place, keep it from moving around. All we're doing is keeping it from moving around. A couple of very important points to keep in mind when you're putting the system together. Our Comfo Air and Zender heat recovery ventilator units all run on 220 volts power. So they come with a plug that go, plugs into a 220 volt outlet. So that's very important. And secondly, every single unit should be equipped with a P-trap. And what this is, is a uh, special P-trap that we sell for these units. It's a waterless P-trap. What you have inside here is a cavity with a small ball. And this floats when you have water in it. When there is no water, so if your trap dries out, if you're not having any condensation drain out of your unit, it will not draw air back up into your unit, which causes a problem potentially with condensation <coughs> clogging into the, the heat recovery core. So, you must put a P-trap on. The P-trap must be either a waterless P-trap like this or have a column of water in it that will prevent air from going back up into the unit and being drawn into the heat recovery ventilator. Very important. So it's time to wrap it up. We've uh, been through the whole, the whole system. We are today came out just to do the controls and make sure that we're all set on uh, clean installation. This is the board from inside the top of the unit. There are four connections 
this point right here and the four strand wires will go to ground, receive RX, transmit TX, and 12 volt. And typically where is the uh, is the remote put like in a... This, this controller, the wired Comfo Control E's, will be located around the corner here. And very important is the transmit from this board, TX, will connect to receive RX on this board. And RX, receive, will go to transmit. So RX and TX cross. And then the 12 volt and the ground go 12 to 12 and ground to ground. Mm -hmm. That's it, yep. it's very simple. And we'll be back here in a month or two when they get ready to commission, which is our last step when all the doors are in place, the house is ready to go and, and for all intents and purposes complete, we come in and we'll measure the flows and make sure that you're getting the right supply, right return, and all the air is going where it wants to be in the right quantities.